God, oh, blimey. It's getting a bit chilly now. Just taking Molly for a walk. Talking about being cold. Um, I was going out to see a friend the other Saturday for lunch. And I stepped out onto the bow. I had a, um, a bag of rubbish in my right hand. Luckily, for some reason, I turned and locked the door and put my phone on the roof. Good job, really, because I turned around, slipped, put my arm out, nothing there, and I went straight into the canal, head first. The temperature outside was about five degrees Celsius and boy the water was cold um, it was deep enough I couldn't stand on the, the floor in the middle so I sort of swam over rather quickly I must add and um, climbed up onto the bank meanwhile Molly was sitting there watching me thinking oh what are you doing that's a bit silly it's a bit chilly no help from her but I leapt out quickly went inside luckily I had a couple of minutes earlier got out of a nice hot shower lots of hot water so I just went straight in the shower fully clothed got the shower going and then sort of stripped off and put all the stuff in the washing machine and warmed up a bit but it goes to say it goes to show you know if I had hit my head or something um, who knows what would have happened because no one was around thankfully in a good way really because it was rather embarrassing but um, if I'd hit my head or if I was right out in the middle of nowhere all sorts could have happened so anyway I've um, done it I think most people that live on a boat fall in at some point um, <laughs> and last Saturday was mine Day. No, no, you don't need to lie down. Sit up. Oh, no, don't roll over. Up again. Come on. Sit. But right, stay. I've been doing this sit and stay business with Molly for quite a while now. Um, as you know, I did it on uh, the narrow boat whilst going along the Coventry Canal. And hopefully, she just stays in the same place. I haven't, I can't see her at the moment, but hopefully in the background you can see that she's still sat there. Um, and I walk further and further away, sometimes completely out of sight, and she's still sat there. Fingers crossed. She quite enjoys it, to be fair. I'm not just teasing her. She loves it when I yell and she comes running down the towpath. Right, that'll do, that'll do. Let's see. Right, so she's right up there. I don't know if you can see. And then I'll whistle. <whistles> Here she comes. Sit, Molly, sit, sit, sit. Good girl. You're a good girl, aren't you? Hey, you're a good girl. Good girl, yes. Okay. In my last episode, the observant viewers may have spotted a white tank on the stern of Alice. 
It's a new 450 litre water tank and is baffled to stop any sudden sloshing about. I'll be placing it under my bed and it'll drastically reduce the need for quite so many water trips. It came with a one inch outlet connection but I needed to drill the inner plastic seal. The screw thread was a BSP type and I vacuumed any tiny bits of plastic from the socket. I used a brass 1 inch to 22 mm reducer and then reduced it down again using a plastic speed fit 22 to 15 mm reducer. I used liquid PTFE tape to form a constant seal around the reducer and screwed it to the tank. I had previously removed some of the ballast to compensate for the additional full tank's 450 kilograms of weight. I also added wooden struts under the tank for additional support. I then, after flushing and cleaning the tank, connected it to the main water system and secured the tank in place. So I'm up at the bow of the boat now. This is the area that I started first and I have added battens above the gunnel. This is quite unusual, but I did it for uh, three key reasons really. I have got a batten already fixed in place that's sitting on top of the gunnel, and I've also got another batten at the top, which is up against the roof line and the wall line. Now those two are fixed. There are sporadic battens, like there's one here, but they're, some of them are skew if, they're not at set distances, and I'm planning to put um, sheet MDF on here, 9mm sheet. I will seal it on the back before I put it on. And then I will be um, probably painting the front with a roller to give a lovely smooth surface. Having sporadic battens all over the place won't help me fixing that. Um, and you know that the, the end of the sheet will end where there's no batten and then I'll be wasting lots of wood. So. I've put these in, they are at 40 centimeter um, centers and they're exactly that way, right the way down the entire length of the boat. Another one of the reasons why I'm using these buttons is the foam insulation. I've explained in a previous episode how the foam has been applied and in some areas it bulges out quite a lot. So giving the wall an extra bit of depth has allowed me to leave the majority of the foam in place and just chop the ends off. This will keep the um, thermal value of the boat because obviously every bit of foam I take off will make the boat colder. I've got this bit of wood and I've just gone down the batten and where it hits the foam I've known that's where I need to chop it off and I've gone like that right the way down the entire boat. Um, that will also allow me to uh, not have to chop as much off because it's a, it's a real pain taking it off, but I've been able to do it in, in channels. The final reason why I've added these buttons are all to do with uh, routing cables. Now normally you would have cables running down the boat either at ceiling and roof height or under the gunnel. Any lower than the gunnel, you're sort of running into lots and lots of rules and regs because you're below the water line, um, you've, they've got to be trunked correctly and all sorts of things. So each button is 12 centimetres longer than they need to be. I've marked it off because I know the piece of wood that's sitting on the gunnel is actually accurate. And so I've lined my mark to the bottom of that piece of wood right the way down the boat so every single button is 12 centimeters longer and that has allowed me to build a cable tray to run all my cabling. Now out of the side of that cable tray I can then come up in conduit behind the sheet of wood that will be here along the gaps um, and I'll be able to have switches and sockets and cables going up to lights and things. But this extra depth has allowed me to do that. Ho ho ho! She nearly went in then.
In my previous video, Mandy Smith commented how intrigued she was with my secret nailing. When installing tongue and groove, I wanted to avoid a row of nails showing. So on the tongue of each panel, I angled a nail at 45 degrees. I hammered it in with a panel pin hammer until the end of the nail was just about flush with the wood. I then used a nail punch to push the head of the nail that little bit further. The groove of the next panel hides the nail, hence the term secret nailing. For both the 240 volt electric sockets and the 12 volt lighting, I've decided to use these brushed steel sockets and switches. Because they're made for normal solid core twin and earth cable in a house, they have screw terminals. However, the cables on my boat are multi-stranded, so I'll be terminating the ends with bootlace ferrules to form a secure connection. I'll bring the cables through split corrugated conduit to these 35mm deep dry lining boxes. I've seen dry lining boxes before and didn't like the fact that the edge of the lining box could be seen behind the fitted sockets. These sockets and switches however are that little bit wider and completely cover the back box's edge. Please do leave a comment below as I do read every one of them and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up. Until next time, see you later.